Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm going to talk about my extensive experience using Gravity Forms over many years and over 40 client websites that I'm using Gravity Forms on, as well as several of my own. Now, Gravity Forms is a form builder tool for WordPress that allows you to build custom forms that can collect data, payments, all sorts of different things. You can use them for things as simple as a contact form and build out elaborate forms for collecting information. We'll look at some examples here. So this is Gravity Forms website. They have pretty simple simple pricing, and I think that their pricing is pretty good. There are other options out there that might be cheaper, but I'm going to talk about a lot of the experience that I have with Gravity Forms that has resulted in this being pretty much a hands-off tool. Some of these licenses include things like, you know, priority support and stuff like that. I've never needed support from Gravity Forms. It just works. And there are tons of add-ons for Gravity Forms as well. This is one of the reasons that I started using Gravity Forms many, many years ago is that I wanted to accept payments in my forms. I wanted my forms to integrate with other services. And there are endless amounts of integrations for Gravity Forms. So here's an example of a simple contact form. This is on my website, just collecting name, email, a message, and then there's a checkbox to get updates from me. Now on the back end of this form, it will send me that information to my email so that I can respond to the request, but then it also adds them to my newsletter, which is great. And this is all automated and they'll get a notification to opt into my newsletter and it's all handled on the back end, nothing that I need to do. But this is a simple use here. We then have a more advanced use, which would be this form, which is for registering for a baseball team. And there's name, address, information, date of birth, lots of fields that are here and lots of options to choose from. And then if you choose one of these options, like I'm interested in being a head coach or a team mom or something like that to this baseball team, then that actually triggers another email that they're going to get with instructions on how to register for a coaching position or something like that. So there's also dynamic stuff that you can handle on the back end here. And then of course, this form allows you to make a purchase as well. And you put in your credit card payment information. And this is connected with Stripe for Stripe checkout, very quick and simple payment. So now on the back end, we're looking at my courses website and I have a variety of different forms that I have built in Gravity Forms. And everything simple from a contact form to interest forms that show up on landing pages like this. So I often produce courses and I want to test to see whether or not there are people interested in specific courses first. I've identified in this example that there are a lot of people, especially young people, that don't really know how to use their computer. I know my kids, they are learning how to use a computer, but they're not learning the intricacies of specific computers. And so I'm putting together this course. I wanted to see if there's interest. And so I built this landing page really quick in Elementor and then dropped a gravity form in there. And this gravity form feeds interest information into this list right here. And this also subscribes them for notifications so that I have an easy list automatically built and I can contact them when I release that course. So there's a variety of different use cases here, everything from simple contact forms to like lead generation forms or interest forms to registration forms that also can accept payments. And years ago, I actually created a gravity form for the career page on a surgical hospital that was a complete application for employment. And it had many, many pages and was a very dynamic form. And we never had any issues with submissions or people filling out that form and losing their data. I mean, it was just very easy to use and it delivered the information safely and securely right to their HR department. So let's take a look at building out a form. Let's go and click on new, add new form. You have lots of different templates that you can choose from here. This is something that they've added in the last few years, but let's just start out with a blank form and we're gonna call this contact. We're just making a contact form. I'll call it contact two, because I already have one that's made and it creates a area for us just to drag and drop fields. Over on the right hand side, we have standard fields. We have advanced fields, post fields, and pricing fields. And then depending on if you had add-ons, you might have some additional items showing up in here. So I would want a name field. I probably would want an email address field. You could even add in a phone number field. And then we might want a 
paragraph text field there as well. You can easily resize these. So you can just click and drag and let's click and drag this home one or this phone one as well. And then we'll move the phone one up here to the right. And so now we're making our form custom. Some forms have really long fields for information and you just don't need all of that space. And so rather than the form being a mile long, you can make it a little bit more compact by resizing these. Now I can easily select which one of these are required. So we just check on the box to make some of these required. We can also choose no duplicates, which will test to make sure that this entry hasn't been sent before. So this wouldn't work good for a contact form, but think about a registration form where somebody might accidentally try to register again, thinking that they hadn't already. And no duplicates would test to make sure that a previous email didn't already exist. We could also make the phone required as well. And then we could change the name here. So call that inquiry and required. And then we have all of our fields required. Now we also have conditional logic down here that we can add to our form. So for example, if we had check boxes, oh, let's just leave first and second choice. And then we'll add an additional single line. Well, let's, let's change the third choice. It makes sense to change, to change the third choice to other because when other is selected, typically there is a box for people to type in their other option. And so we'll just title this one other option. And we want this field only to show. So we'll enable conditional logic, show this field if all or any of the following, if untitled, which we didn't title that is set to other, then this is going to display. So well, I'm just gonna go ahead and save the form just to save all of our changes. And then when I close this and go back, it's still gonna show us other option here, but it's only going to display this form. So if we go to preview, it's only going to display that if we choose other. So when we choose other, you can see other option shows up. So it's really cool to be able to use conditional logic to have different fields show up when you need them and hide them when you don't. In past years with the baseball registration, we had a form that was really easy for them to add all of their children to one form. They decided they wanted it more simplified because when they print out all of that data, they want specific registrations for each child. And it was hard to do that in gravity forms. But we had a form where you select how many kids that you're gonna be registering. By conditional logic, it adds additional fields for names, for ages, for schools and all of that stuff. So it's hidden if you don't. And if you add one kid, it adds just the amount. If you add two kids, it adds a whole nother section, three, another section. And it was pretty cool just to have all of that handled using conditional logic. So when your form is done, you obviously need it to go somewhere. So you can choose notifications. Notifications, you can build out pretty much as many of these as you want. By default, there's admin notification that's here, but let's just go ahead and create a new one so I could show you all of the options that are available. So we could just call this one Notify Jared. And who's it gonna send to? So we need this to go to an email address. So let's just add my email address. And under the from name, we want this to come from the person who sent the form. So over here are these dynamic tags that we can add to build this out. We'll just put first name in here. I'll put a space and then we'll put last name in place from email. I want this to come from my website. So I might call this no reply at jaredhill.com. And then under reply to, if I get sent this notification, when I hit reply, I want the reply to go back to the person who filled out the form. So we'll choose email, which will populate their email in there. We can also BCC people on this as well. So if I wanted to make sure that say I had an assistant or somebody else working with me also got copies of these, I could add BCC so that when I reply that it's also BCC to someone else. Pretty cool to have that. And then under subject, this is the subject line for the email. And so I can call this submission from and then I could even select the form name over here and do this dynamically. So we'd put in the form title. And then in the message here, we can also add all submitted fields. And since this one's going to me, I don't really need it to say anything other than all submitted fields. And then we're done. We hit update notification. Now we can also build out a notification that's sent to the person who filled out the form. And so in that box where we would put the information that would go in the email, we can add anything else that might be interesting and needed for 
for that response. So for example, with the baseball registration, there's information about upcoming dates in that email. There's a copy of all of the information that they submitted down at the bottom. And so it's a pretty elaborate email that they receive and it's all automatically sent to them once they pay and submit that baseball registration. So it's pretty cool to be able to just send all that information out and have it all be automated because we could build out a custom notification in the back end here in Gravity Forms. Now, confirmations is what they would see after they finish submitting the form. And confirmations could be anything from just some text on the screen, which is what we see right here. And this option would allow us to link to a specific page on our website. And so you can actually redirect them. So when they finish the form, it redirects them to a thank you page that might have additional information. And this is also good for attribution tracking. So if you're doing email marketing or some other form of marketing, and you're wanting to track leads, you can track leads and then to conversions as well. And so you can track your conversions because if somebody comes to that page, obviously you have that click, it comes to the page, you can track that and you can track attribution. But then if they complete the form and go to the thank you page, that's technically a conversion and you need that for conversion tracking. And you would put a pixel or some sort of tracking code on that page and you can select which page that they would go to here. Alternatively, you can also redirect them somewhere else. So we can redirect them off to another website, uh, or this would be a manual way of sending them to another page on our website as well. And then it also allows you to pass through queries at the end, and you can use all of the dynamic tags there. And so there's just tons of ways that you can customize this. Now, if you have certain integrations with your site, now you can also see that Klaviyo is mentioned right here. That's an integration that I have running on this site. Klaviyo is an email marketing platform, and it's integrated with Gravity Forms and my website. So if somebody fills out a form and they check that box to be notified of course updates or be added to my newsletter or something like that, then it's going to send their information over to my Klaviyo account and it's going to automatically subscribe them to the appropriate list. Now you can also see all of the entries to your forms on the back end of your website as well, which is great. Obviously these are emailed to me, but they're also available in the back end of the site. So if I deleted that email, I have a backup of the form information in my website and I can go and access that information there. Gravity Forms also makes it really easy for you to export all of your entries. And so I can choose a form and export all of the entries to a CSV spreadsheet. I can also export the forms and import forms. So if I create specific forms pretty often, I can have that export file right on my computer and then I can go and just import it into additional websites as I'm building out those sites. So they don't have to manually build out those forms all the time. And then of course, from the back end, you can also see all of the different add-ons that are available. There are two tabs, official add-ons, which are from Gravity Forms themselves. And there's a ton of options here, a lot of payment options, a lot of integrations with different email marketing tools like ConvertKit, Dropbox, and different tools like that because you can add dynamic fields to your forms to allow file uploads and stuff like that. File upload can then be connected and added to a Dropbox folder. Pretty cool to be able to have some of these features integrated right into your forms on your website. And then certified add-ons, there are just tons and tons of different add-ons that are available that can do all sorts of things like limit the amount of submissions. If you ever want to limit the amount of submissions available on a form, I've had to do that in the past with clients that can only have a certain amount of registrations for something before it's full. You don't want too many people registering. And so you can limit the amount of entries that are allowed to be made. And so there's just endless possibilities with Gravity Forms, which is one of the reasons why I use it. Now, Gravity Forms has also added in Gravity SMTP, which makes it really easy for you to configure email routing on the back end of your website. Some websites, depending on the web host, will do an okay job of sending a few notifications here or there. But if you're handling payments, if you're handling larger amounts of form submissions, you probably want to also install Gravity SMTP and configure that with some method for sending email. I use SendGrid, and so SendGrid, like $10 a month handles, I don't know, tens of thousands of emails 
a month that it can possibly send with that level of an account. And I know I'm not going to miss any important form submissions because the email is being managed through a tool that authenticates the email and makes sure that everything is sent securely. So I can't recommend Gravity Forms enough. I've been using them since 2014 is the first payment that I have on record to them. And so that's over 10 years that I've been using Gravity Forms on client websites and have had zero issues. If you take the time to set it up and configure it properly, you won't have much form spam, if any at all. You'll have great quality submissions and a good experience for the person filling out the forms on your website. So check out the link in the description below to Gravity Forms and give it a try on your website or your next project. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.